Hello and welcome to another video with the Bearded Tech Guy. In this video, we will be going over my thoughts on the Husqvarna Automower 315X after having it for one year. If you would like to see my video on my initial thoughts of the robot lawnmower, you can find a link for that in the description below. For those that may not be familiar with how Husqvarna automowers work, a boundary wire must be laid out along the entire area you want the lawnmower to work. The wiring used is low voltage and similar to what would be used for invisible dog fencing. The lawnmower bounces around the area, cutting small amounts of the grass at a time. This is different compared to a traditional lawnmower, where you will go back and forth cutting the grass, and usually cutting large portions of the blades off of the grass each time. The random pattern of the lawnmower causes the mower to almost always cut the grass in a different direction, which is supposed to help the grass grow. And the smaller grass clippings allow for them to fall into the ground and break down adding nutrients into the soil much quicker than normal grass clippings. The automower line has three different groupings. There is the Bluetooth Connect line, the X line, and the Professional line. Bluetooth Connect features the ability to send commands to your automower from your phone over Bluetooth. The X line comes equipped with cellular connectivity allowing for the ability to send commands and change settings right from your phone without having to be near it. They also come with built-in GPS to allow for better mowing navigation as well as GPS theft tracking. The X line currently has six different models that support different features, cutting heights, and areas covered. And lastly, the professional line is meant for commercial usage, such as for landscapers, property managers, or fleet owners. The 315X is rated for roughly 0.4 of an acre, has a cutting height possible between 0.8 of an inch up to 2.4 inches, has 70 minutes of mow time on a single charge, and takes roughly 60 minutes to charge in between mowings. The mower itself is really quiet when running. It's rated for 60 decibels, which is quieter than a lot of fixed air conditioners. It's quiet enough that I run mine at night without disturbing anyone, and that way I have my yard available during the day without having to worry about the lawnmower getting in the way. The only time the mower is actually noticeable is if the grass is long. Then you will hear a distinct cutting sound as the mower cuts the grass. Once the grass is at its maintained height, you will no longer notice the sound. Even still, it's not loud enough to hear over an air conditioner running at night. For my installation, I did have my local Husqvarna dealer install the boundary wire for me with a trenching machine. This allowed for the wire to be put underground instead of having it stapled down and waiting for the grass to grow over it. For my yard, the largest section is my backyard, which has two sections wired off to keep the mower out of it, and that is my pool and garden bed. I then have a small passageway, which is where the auto mower charging station is located. My front yard is a decent size, and then I have a sidewalk separating the front yard and the curbside grass. I also have a third section on the other side of my house, which the lawnmower uses part of my driveway to get to. At the beginning of my first season with the automower, it did have trouble figuring out how to get back to its charger. This was due to it being directly on the other side of a fence, the power of the beacon on the charger too high, and the boundary wire being too close to the guide wire through the fence passageway. Because of this, the mower kept getting stuck on the other side of the fence and would go back and forth for several minutes until finally getting through to charge. Over the course of a few days, this wore the grass down to just mud. After moving the boundary wire a bit and changing a few of the settings on the lawnmower, it stopped having the issue and was able to get to the charger, but not before ruining my grass. I did attempt to replant grass there, but because of the location it seems to collect water more so than other areas, and because of that I did have trouble growing grass there as my lawnmower still would travel over the area to get back to the charger. I was finally able to get grass to grow in that area this season by planting grass seed before starting the mower for the year. I was also able to grow grass this year and last year in other areas of my lawn with the mower going normally, so I think the conditions were just right to stop the grass from growing properly. For my first season with the mower, I did have my grass a bit too high for the mower and honestly for my normal cutting preference. Because of this, the first week or so the mower would only cut for about 30 minutes before having to charge. With the size and complexity of my yard, I am close to the upper limits of what the 315X can handle, and with extra long grass, it wasn't able to keep up with my normal schedule. So I did end up using my push mower to get the grass to a reasonable height, and after that the auto mower had no problems keeping the grass at the perfect height. I did plan on starting my second season off right and getting the mower out in time, but because of a few issues I had, that I'll be touching on soon, I ran into similar issues with my grass. The grass wasn't as long this time around, so it was able to get caught up pretty quickly, but it did end up leaving a lot of long grass clippings on the top that I did have to collect. But once everything was taken care of, it was able to keep up just fine for the rest of the season. Luckily, I had the opportunity to hopefully capture the auto mower actually cutting grass. This is something I had requested on my previous video, so I wanted to record it as best as I could. 
It's normally really hard to capture since the automower cuts off tiny amounts of grass each time. With my extra long grass though, I was able to get some pretty good footage. I first cleaned off the area to remove any potential already cut grass. I then let the mower do its thing, which was actually a bit difficult as it decided to turn around a few different times. But as you can see, the mower was able to cut the tall grass easily and left some pretty long clippings behind. Again, normally the grass clippings are very small and just fall to the ground and compose pretty quickly. The 315X features a single guide wire that the lawnmower uses to determine where to go to start cutting and also uses it to figure out how to get back to its charger. Some larger models feature two or even three guide wires. While my layout really could have used two or probably even a third wire, it wasn't worth the cost increase to go to a larger mower for me. So because of that, my guide wire goes into my backyard, through a fence opening, circles around and comes back through and then goes out to the front yard. From there, it turns and actually goes to my driveway. With a guide wire, you can set up different starting points that are based on the distance of the guide wire and then set a percentage of how often the starting point should be used. For the 315X, it supports up to three starting points. On the 315X, I also have the option for GPS-assisted navigation, which will actually use the onboard GPS to map out your mowing area based on where the boundary wires are, as well as your guide wires. It then registers which parts of your yard are mowed and changes its cutting pattern to make sure it covers everything. This does take a few days for it to figure everything out, but it does work pretty nicely. I noticed recently it was using the guide wire to follow out to the small section of my yard across my driveway several times until the area was cut, so the feature does work pretty well. I don't think the GPS is used for finding the charging base though, which is a bit disappointing as it would cut down on search time dramatically. It would also be nice if you could set up areas within the app for GPS based locations and set the percentages of how often an area should be mowed or even set specific schedules for the different areas. The built-in LED headlights have been a great feature to have since I do have my mower running at night and it does cross the sidewalk in a few places. It's nice to know that it will be visible to people walking and they won't just fall over it. You can set the headlights to always be on, always be off, evening only, or evening and night. I'm not really sure how much they impact mowing time, but it's nice not to waste extra runtime during the day when they aren't needed. The lights are also helpful for locating the lawnmower if it runs into trouble at night, which I've run into a few times and will be covering shortly. With the built-in cellular modem, I'm able to check on my lawnmower anytime I want and get instant notifications if there are any issues with the mower. This was really helpful last season as I had horseshoe pits that were not properly boarded up as I planned on removing them. Because of this, there were a few times that the lawnmower did find its way into the pits and did get stuck. So being notified it was stuck was helpful so I could go out and save it without too much time being wasted for mowing. Now that the horseshoe pits are gone, I haven't had any issues with it getting stuck anywhere. The app itself is pretty handy as well. I'm able to change some key settings without having to go out to the mower. I can track where the mower is, and I can even see some statistics about how long it's mowing the lawn or how much time it's spending trying to get back to the charger. With the app, you can have more than one mower, which is nice, and you are able to pull up the installation and troubleshooting guides right from your phone, which is also helpful. Another use of the cellular modem is the ability to integrate the mower into my smart home. This allows me to park my mower if it gets too windy, a lightning storm is on the way, or skip mowing for a bit if it's rained too much and the yard is too wet. I do also have it set up with Google Home, but because it runs on a schedule and I have automation set up to stop and start the mower when needed, I honestly don't use the voice assistant with it. Maintenance for the mower is pretty straightforward. I recommend just visually inspecting it every week or two to make sure it seems fine and cleaning off the wheels as needed if there is any buildup. I have the all-terrain kit on mine, which features more rugged wheels and brushes that help keep the wheels clean. In the fall, I clean off the mower and store it in my basement until the next season. Do make sure it's fully charged before putting it away. In the spring, I like to change out the blades if I didn't do it right before putting the mower away. Blade replacement is really easy. All you have to do is lay the mower on something soft and line up the screws with the holes and then unscrew the blade. Next, you put the new blade in and screw it down. After, you just repeat the same two steps two more times. Outside of that, there really isn't much else to do for the mower. 
which is a great advantage over a typical push gas mower or riding mower on top of not having to pay for gas money. The blades themselves are also pretty cheap as well, which is great as I was expecting them to be really overpriced. I'll have a few links in the description below for anyone interested. Over the previous winter, I needed to have part of my lawn dug up in order to have a new bubbler line run for my house out to the street. Unfortunately, the ground wire was too frozen to try to preserve the boundary wire around where the work was being done. So because of that, I assumed in the spring I would have to have the boundary wire repaired, which wasn't that big of a deal. A few months after that, the sidewalk that the automower goes over was ruined and had to be replaced, which meant even more boundary wire which would have to be rerun. The original plan was just to have the dealer come out and retrench new boundary wire down so that way it was correctly done and underground. Of course, this was at the start of 2020, which caused the dealer not to be able to come out to do the work. This left it up to me to fix the wire. I first worked on the boundary wire and ran the new wire along it, connecting it to a point on the old boundary wire that I knew was good still. After that, I ran the guide wire section that needed to be fixed and connected it to the boundary wire as the instructions stated. Unfortunately, when I went to test the wire I ran, the mower was still indicating something was wrong. So I went back and used my wire tester to trace out the wiring underground that was near where the work was done. Sure enough, I found a break, so I ran new wiring over that and was back in business. After I verified all the wiring was good, I used masonry sealant to cover the wires that ran in the grooves of my sidewalk. This is both to protect the wires, but also to prevent anyone from tripping over them. While it wasn't impossible to get everything repaired and the tools I needed to do so, it definitely was a process, and it is something to keep in mind if you plan on getting a robot lawnmower, as you may run into a similar situation. After I finally got my boundary wire repaired, I ran into my second issue of the season, and that was one of my dry wheels had seized. I spent some time cleaning around the wheel and taking everything apart as best I could without voiding the warranty, but it still would not budge. So I ended up having to bring it to the dealer where they took everything apart and discovered that the wheel bearing somehow corroded over. This was something the dealer has never seen before, but was able to easily order a replacement part and fix it all under warranty. The other side appears to be fine, so I think it may have something to do with where the mower charger is. I plan on looking into either making or buying some kind of house for it to better protect it from the elements. I also did do some research on the issue and didn't really turn up anything, so it's possible it was just unlucky and had a faulty part that originally rusted on its own. After I got my mower back, it was ready to go, cutting down my tall grass. I did manually mow the lawn a few times to keep it under control, but I left a small section of the grass to grow to see how the auto mower would handle really tall grass. It actually managed to cut a decent amount of the tall grass, which I was surprised to see happen, but eventually the really long grass clippings managed to tangle around the cutting disc, causing it to no longer function. This was pretty much expected as the auto mower isn't meant to tackle such a challenge. This does raise a point that I like to mention, and that is that you are kind of at the mercy of your local Husqvarna dealer. While this shouldn't be the only reason to not consider an auto mower, or honestly any robot lawnmower for that matter, it's something to keep in mind as if you run into issues, you will need to bring it back to the Husqvarna dealer to have work done on it. So if the closest shop is 7 hours away, you may want to see if you have other options. This is also kind of a positive as well, as other brand robot lawnmowers do not have shops located anywhere, so any warranty work needing to be done would require you to ship your lawnmower in, which would be very expensive. The only other downside for me is the inability for the mower to get up against an object to cut the grass. This will leave some areas of grass to grow that requires weed whacking. I didn't know this going into this endeavor, but it is one of the few things that I don't like about it, and is important that others are aware of this if they are considering a robot lawnmower. I believe there is now a model from a different company that claims to cut to the edge of things, but without seeing it firsthand, I can't confirm or deny if it actually works. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the Husqvarna Automower. It's a great time saver, and it's really nice to not have to worry about cutting my lawn anymore. I actually had to be away from home for several weeks last year, and while the grass didn't cross my mind at the time, it was nice to come home to a perfectly maintained lawn minus the edges that needed to be weed whacked. And not a fine from the city because my grass was too tall. Without the auto mower, I would have to spend close to two hours every time cutting my lawn, and during the rainy season, I would have to normally cut my lawn two to three times a week. But because of my robot lawnmower, I have a lot more free time to get other housework done. Being able to tie my lawnmower into my smart home has also been a great added benefit, as that way my purchase is better protected from the environment, such as heavy rain or a nasty lightning storm. Unless my Husqvarna 315X auto mower breaks down with an unreasonable time frame, I personally don't see myself moving away from this robot lawnmower anytime soon. And if for some reason it does break down in an unreasonable time frame, I don't think I could ever go back to a traditional push mower or even a riding lawnmower. One of my favorite weekend activities now is just to float around my pool listening to my neighbors cut their grass, knowing it's not something I have to worry about anymore. I'd love to know your thoughts on robot lawnmowers in general, so make sure to let me know in the comments below. And if you have one already, let me know what you think of it. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up as it helps out the channel immensely. And if you aren't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to be one of the first to know when I release new tech videos just like this one.
Thank you for watching.